In this tutorial, I would like to give an introduction to the page analysis and OCR functionality in Alethea. We integrated an open source OCR engine called Tesseract. Currently, we are switching to version 3.04, so most likely that's the version you will have if you installed Alethea. I am changing the toolbar layout to page analysis and OCR, which should make it easier to find the relevant tools. I will start from an empty page. In this video, I will concentrate on layout analysis and OCR for a whole page. You can also work on a more fine-grained level, but we are going to reserve this for a future tutorial. For now, I will continue without a black and white image. I will come back to that later. To start with, I open the page analysis dialog from here. You are presented with some options now. On the left, you can choose the text recognition language. Alethea comes with some predefined languages, but it is possible to add any language that is supported by Tesseract. If you train Tesseract for your own data, you can also add that to Alithia. On the right side, you can select what kind of page content you want. We leave everything at the default for now and simply press Run. Depending on the size of the image, this may take a while. OK, that was quick enough. At first glance, it also looks quite alright. Let's zoom in a bit. With the analysis settings we chose, you get layout regions, but no text content and neither text line objects, word objects or glyph objects. So I will run another page analysis and choose the last option on the right called glyphs, words, text lines, regions with text. At this opportunity I can also explain the tick box at the bottom here. If it's ticked, and by default it is, all existing page objects will be replaced with the new results. That means everything we got from the first run will be lost. This will take a little bit longer now. You can see there is a bit more going on now. The outlines of text lines, words and glyphs are visible. And if I switch to respective views up here, you can see them more clearly. I will now run it yet another time and activate those two options down here. Pay attention to the text regions. The Improve Polygons feature sort of shrink wraps around text line, word and glyph objects so instead of a rectangle, we have a much more closely fitting outline. That can be favorable in many use cases. We also enabled reading order, so let's have a quick look. The result will always be a strictly sequential order, so for complex page layouts this might not be too useful. Now, depending on what you want to do with the page analysis results, you might want to improve them a bit first. If you want to use the data for performance analysis, for example, you will need 100% correct ground truth data. Essentially, this is manual post-processing of the data you got. It makes sense to start with correcting the region segmentation, meaning the separation in outlines of regions. Existing polygons can be easily changed using the Edit tool. Have a look at our tutorial about manual editing, if you haven't done already. Sometimes changing the outlines is not enough. The third paragraph here, for instance, was recognized as two regions instead of one. To correct this, we need to merge them. Just select the two regions and click on Merge Objects in the toolbar. This will give you a preview of the merged text content. If the order is wrong, you can change it here. In our case, it's correct and we can just click on Merge to confirm it. Now we have one region. As you might have noticed already, this region still isn't quite right. The pink region towards the bottom here is a separator. This strongly indicates that the last text line should be a separate region. To fix this, you can use the Split tool. Just activate it in a toolbar and draw a line where you want to split the region. You need to start and finish the line slightly outside the region. Click to add point after point and finish with a right click. As you can see, you get a small window in the end with some information. Effectively, this is a warning that the text content of the region has been duplicated and most likely needs to be corrected. This is because Alethea doesn't know where to split the actual text, so you will have to do that yourself. We will come to that in a bit. To avoid overlapping regions, you could now edit the outlines of the two new regions. Alternatively, you can split into three regions and delete the one in the middle. Or, if you don't care about separators, you can simply delete it by selecting it and pressing the delete key. This is really all you need to correct the whole page layout. 
I'm not going to finish everything, but rather show you how to work on the region attributes and text content. The region types and subtypes that come from the page analysis are rather limited. You might want to refine them using the object properties dialog. We have described it in a previous tutorial. To check the text content, you can use the text overlay feature of Alifia. Just open the text dialog and activate the overlay. You will then see the text line you are currently working on in the dialog, also at the mouse position within the image view. By using the cursor keys, you can quickly check all text lines right next to the original. With the page down key, you can also jump to the next text region. One final thing I wanted to mention is the black and white image. The Tesseract OCR engine will create its own internal bitonal image to do the layout and text recognition. Unfortunately, it's not always doing well in this, especially if the quality of the color image isn't great. I will open another image to show you what I mean. I already have a black and white image for that one, so I might as well use it. You can always switch between the two versions of the images using the tab key. Now I will run the page analysis on the color image first. As you see, it doesn't look great. Let's run it again with the black and white image. You can immediately see that the result is better. It's not perfect, but better. If you use the undo and redo, it becomes a bit more clear even. If you don't have a ready-made bitonal black and white image, you can create one yourself with the three tools here. The first one uses a manually selected threshold. You might know that from image processing tools. The second one is fully automated. That's also the one Alifia uses when you select the auto create at the beginning when you open the color image. The third one is also automated, but has a couple of sliders to influence the result. Usually you would try the fully automated one first and if the result is not promising, try the other ones. Okay, this should be enough as an introduction. Thanks for watching and keep an eye on our YouTube channel.